So, appearances can be deceiving. Right now you see a, a guy with some twiddled moustache, twirls, and uh, with a beanie, and some might think I'm a little bit punk, maybe a little bit gothic, or uh, maybe a little bit weird, whatever, especially if I took off the beanie. Oh, God forbid, God forbid. Um, appearances can be deceiving, so first of all, I want to just ask of you, the viewer, before you judge, before you judge my merits, the credibility of my words, before you've even heard any of my actual, what I have to say, um, we do have this tendency to uh, judge people rather superficially based on their appearance, uh, even just based on the sound of a person's voice can uh, dictate the parameters of how much a person can actually be receptive um, and, and even show respect, you know what I mean? So. All I ask is to look be beyond the surface and to listen um, to something that's trying to be communicated to you from beyond the surface. This isn't just my face just wanting to make noise at you. This is something coming from somewhere I want to give to you. Uh, make it a, of it what you will, but all I ask is that you make of it what you will, not make of me what you will, and then based on your uh, conclusion about me or your judgment about me let that dictate whether uh, you should even consider what I have to say or not all right because um, you know that, I think this is why people online that do these videos and they have like there's annoying robot voices uh, it can be annoying but on the other hand at least it doesn't trigger that bias you know what I mean that judgment so um, you know the other thing with appearances I'm looking at my points I've written down it's really about symbolism symbols something that you can see and principles the meaning behind the symbol or you can even say uh signa soma and signa soma signa means significance so the meaning of something that gives it significance soma means form like the physical form so when people say it's psychosomatic okay in like a clinical context a psychosomatic effect that means that something that's psycho Psych in Latin means soul, so, or mind in other words. So the mind, psychosomatic, soma, the mind has an effect on the body. You know, so you believe that you're sick and then you start physically feeling sick. That's psychosomatic because your body is your soma. So about this whole appearances thing, and I'll move on from this point in a moment, but like it's, it's all about, uh, you know, this is a symbol you see beyond be, before you now, but there are principles inside it. There are values, beliefs meanings, uh, intentions, you know, all the stuff that really matters about a person, not the surface stuff that people in this world can really easily get caught up on to the point where they, they don't even see the universal truths inside the other person that actually binds everyone together. They don't even see it because they get so caught up on the outside differences. You know what I mean? Um, the other way that this applies is even in the world of the corporations, the corporate world, the economy, economical world, You've got, uh, you know, you've got your brand um, and you've got your reputation, okay? So your your brand is uh, basically the, the look of it, the feel of whatever the product or the service is that you're selling. There's a certain feel, there's a certain appearance um, that when people see that brand, like Coca-Cola, the brand of Coca-Cola, you think, mmm, it's oh, McDonald's better yet, you know, um, I'm loving it. So you think happy smiles, um, you think red and yellow, you think fast food, happy smile, all, you know what I mean? That's the brand. Uh, the reputation, on the other hand, uh, is, is more about the story that's attached to that brand. So that's more like, you know, when they release the healthy food and they're going pro healthy choices, or if they do charity towards uh, pink ribbon and, and all this stuff. So even there, you got symbol and you got principle, even in the world of business, you got uh, on one side, you need to focus on the physical appearance of how people receive this thing and what they think and feel when they see your logo and when they're inside your actual cafe or whatever. Uh, but then you got your reputation that people also care about. And um, like I said, this should also apply to people, the same awareness that people shouldn't just dismiss somebody's reputation uh, based on somebody's appearance. You know, even if somebody, even by based on the appearance of, of a person's wording, even based on the appearance of what a person is saying and how it seems, you shouldn't base the merit uh, or credibility of everything that person might have to offer in terms of information 
just because they happen to say one or two or a few things in a way that you thought was foolish or half-brained or stupid, you know what I mean? So um, that's what I want to put out first, is just that precursor that it should be a balance. Um, but less, I think, when you're listening to people and you're trying to actually understand information, the focus should be on the information, on the signa, uh, not the soma. Make sense? So I want to talk about coalition mentality because this kind of ties in with that. Coalition mentality is a term of psychology, um, which my father was a psychologist. I was reading his textbook since I was 12. I'm 32 now, so 20 years constantly researching. I've researched uh, since I was 15. I've researched more than I have spent speaking to people. And I've done these talks and these presentations and basically taking information, contemplating, connecting the dots, and then outputting information. I'll be doing that more like this than I have with actual people. Not to say I haven't spoken to people a lot, I have, but um, just letting you know that you know I, I'm not a, I'm not a PhD in everything because I didn't want to be limited, um, and I didn't want I didn't want my my I didn't want to have conditioned into me this propaganda, but I wanted to learn how to learn myself. I wanted to learn how to develop my own logic, my own unique signature perception and way of deciphering information, um, and through doing that, it's allowed me to to really hone in what comes natural to me and what I'm best at doing naturally, instead of having to adopt somebody else's system of thought every single left right turn. You know what I'm saying? So, but I have researched a lot into psychology and heaps of different things. But anyway, I just have a bit of a background on me. So, coalition mentality is a psychology uh, concept, and it basically means that you know people form coalitions. It's what you might have heard when people say that we're herd animals, is that we don't like to be alone, we like to move in packs, we like to be part of something, we like to be part of a group or a family. Um, so we find this through family, through friends, through uh, colleagues, we gravitate into groups, um, even cults, okay, um, even when we go to church, whatever, or a football club, cricket club, whatever, a dance club, doesn't matter. It's all about people needing to be together. Now, coalition mentality, the mentality of these people that kind of form coalition. The reason why it's called coalition, because you think about coalition, a coalition is a group of people that are marching uh, for something and against something else, right? That's kind of what you think about when you hear the word coalition. It's like somebody is very set with certain views this way, but not that way, and they're against something. So coalition mentality is basically when a group of people um, you know, everyone has their own beliefs and their own values and their own uh, in, in opinions, okay, um, and perspectives on what's right, what's wrong, what's preferable, what's undesirable, you know, what's a no-go, and that's not, that's like, you know, uh, that, that's a sin. Uh, let's use Christian circus, for example. So you might have somebody who's actually uh, homosexual or lesbian, whatever, and they, you know, they've been raised to be Christian, they've been going to church, um, because these are the people that they've been most exposed to, these Christians, they uh, they hide the fact that they're lesbian because they don't want to stick out like a sore thumb. Uh, they don't want to break their uniformity or their conformity to the group that to them is uh, one of their biggest support structures or part of, the, part of their identity because that's how we form our identities through these groups that we identify with. But in doing so, in identifying with these people, we make compromises on our identity, on releasing and revealing and exposing the whole entire spectrum and truth of who we are. Because we feel in, you know, in certain groups, it's okay to be like this and to speak like this and reveal these truths about oneself. But in other groups, you, you kind of you keep that stuff to yourself and you keep it inward because you don't want to stick out. So that's coalition mentality. Basically, uh, it's whereby people, when in their groups, they minimize their differences so they don't stick out and they maximize their similarities. So the gay person, for example, that I made before, they might, might, they might, they might even join the, the marches, the, the, the anti-gay marches, the burn in hell. They might actually hold the sign like, yeah, yeah. And, you know, there's that whole idea, some, some older people, like older men um, who were raised from the traditional times that, you know, um, you don't want to be a faggot and you blah, 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 and why do you want to do dancing classes? You know, that kind of upbringing. So maybe even in their mind, because they were conditioned to just reject that part of themselves, they never really looked at it properly. They never really considered it could be there. They never really embraced it, let alone grew comfortable with it. 
And this is where the term projection comes in. Projection is when you have a, an issue with yourself or some kind of judgment, something you haven't really resolved or processed properly. And then when you see it in other people, you project it from your own, it's your own business. You're making other people's business, your own problem, but now you've got a problem with them despite the three fingers pointing back. So that's this idea that even, you know, even if, even if you do have these truths, you might grow so used to repressing it that it becomes normal to you. And this is where I say, you know, you, you minimize your differences and you maximize your similarities. So this person has maximized the similarity of like, yeah, we're all straight because that's the status quo in my little group that I'm part of. Um, so that's what people do. They, they, they exaggerate the views with the people that they see as the ones they want to satisfy and please to a certain degree. Uh, their expectations of and not they don't want to be you know seem weird to these people or stand out be the black sheep um so people will exaggerate the ways in which they actually do have affinity the ways in which they are on the same page and they'll bark to the same tunes this is a natural psychological process and it's a, an important one to be aware of especially when you're trying to uh, engage on the quest for truth trying to figure out what's going on it's easy to be triggered, uh, especially online these days. Uh, we have so many, you know, people, um, you know, propaganda, for example, so much propaganda. And, uh, you know, if you watch the WHO events, Event 201, they spoke about this, how, um, you know, they, they want to just do a flood of positive information about COVID-19 and how it's been handled, about how we need the vaccine, getting people prepared for these next steps. Um, but then they also were talking very heavily. Most of the thing was about managing the people, impression management, public relations, PR, uh, managing, you know, those who are actually naysaying, those who are calling out potential dangers and risks and, uh, expressing concerns basically, and just figuring out ways to, uh, censor them. They even said in the WHO event two months before COVID-19 broke out and they simulated the, the exact same event that we're experiencing now. Check it out if you haven't seen it. Um, who did it? World Health Organization, 40% states, Bill Gates. Um, but yeah, they, they even said that, they, you know, uh, in the simulation, they said no, certain people have been penalized and uh, put, even put in prison for disinformation. So there's this control and this manipulation and this uh, censorship and, and oppression of information, of freedom of speech. So what I see now, like if I comment on anything, I've joined some of these vaccine pages just to talk with people about it, get insight, share insight. But I notice, like, I think a lot of these people must be shills. And what I mean by that is like people that get paid to just literally just go around uh, putting bits of disinformation, shutting down people who are expressing concern or a different view than the supreme established authority of unquestionable fact. If anyone questions that, um, they just shut down a lot of the time, like one guy, he, he actually made a point to every single post I posted in this, in this vaccine thing. And it wasn't like crazy posts. It was just normal. Some of them were just normal talking, but every single post he did a laughing face, right? No comments at all. He even went on my wall, my personal Facebook wall, and then proceeded to laugh at like eight comments before I just blocked him. So I was like, fuck this. So even that is a form of propaganda. Because you think about it, you enter a room and there's a guy trying to talk to everyone and everyone's laughing at the guy and they're looking at each other and nodding like, what an idiot. The, ch the, the chances of you ignoring the person speaking and being inclined to just join in because of coalition mentality, you want to fit in kind of with the majority of what you've entered. Um, it becomes heightened. The chance of you ignoring it increases because everyone else is, you know, it's the same thing online. You go in and you see all these laughing faces from these people that have either been paid or they just feel that all they can best contribute is judgment and a demeaning laugh emoji. Because the emoji represents a digital expression of the same thing that I just mentioned. When you enter a room and people are laughing at each other or giving a thumbs up. And if everyone, you know, you walk into a post and it's got lots of thumbs up and loves and lots of comments and positive remarks and positive gestures, right? Just, just those clicks, just the emoji clicks. The psychological effect of that is the same as walking into a room and seeing a guy talking and everyone is quiet and smiling and p being attentive and looking at each other and yeah, it's good. This It's good what he has to say. Chance of you actually taking that guy seriously is so much higher, even at least listening to him, as opposed to entering a room and all these people that are being paid or just that's all they can contribute. They're just laughing. They're just doing angry faces, just, you know, and all these insults. 
And uh, it's like it's like high school. It's like they fight, 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 and everyone kind of gravitates to that circle, and they, you know, it's so easy to just join in, fight, fight, and do the stacks on of of bullying or of censorship or of demeaning, undermining, abusing. Um, and this is happening a lot now, more than ever. I see there's two sides to this war, and and you know, no two ways about it. This is a psyop. This is a a war of psychology, a war on our mind. And it's dividing us from each other more than ever before. Uh, we thought the terrorists were bad and like us fearing them and us versus them. But now it's like we've got to fear everyone, right? The invisible war. But it's really calling to the battlefront. Uh, these people that are trying to understand the truth and trying to engage in, in a spark of discussion. Okay. An investigation. And other people are like, no, don't investigate. All the facts have already been released. Shut your mouth, you idiot tinfoil hat. And you got these two signs of conspiracy denialists just straight out denying the possibility so even if you're just questioning the possibility even if you just bring into the table contrary information that actually has valid validity uh, but it's contrary to the status quo narrative the, the, the public narrative um, they'll shut you down because they're just denialists and then you have the theorists and it should be noted that um conspiracy theory the term was actually as david ike has expressed was created by the cia in like i think it was the 60s or some point once uh i don't know when exactly but once jfk got killed and there was a lot of suspicious for the years afterwards pe people were suspicious about how he died and then was it set up and was the cia in on it so in order to they did all this like they got some psychologists and whatnot and they, they pretty much said how can we approach this problem with the public relations with the people getting suspicious and it's it's, it's they're expressing it to such a point and it's, it's starting to become something notable how do we stop how do we quench that before it rises too high and these guys pretty much said well you know just call them conspiracy theorists we'll just put it as propaganda and we'll say anyone that questions the official account of what happened we will just uh, dub as a conspiracy theorist because really that's what it is conspiracy just means two people coming together planning to do something in secret it's going to elevate them in some way and they're going to benefit in some way and other people aren't. Other people are going to be exploited or they're going to be lowered as a result or hurt or harmed. That's a conspiracy. People making plots in secret to advance themselves at the expense of other people. And now we are drowning in conspiracies, if you think of it that way, because we do have, it's quite commonly known, If and if you don't agree and you're incredibly naive or simply uninformed, um, this world is full of people advancing themselves at the expense of other people and often in secret. And this has also been exposed in declassified files and uh, public apologies um, by the highest of officials. So it makes no logical sense at all to dismiss the the word conspiracy exists for a reason. To, uh, to, to you know, there's laws um, as put in place to prevent government tyranny, to prevent conspiracy. So why are there laws put in place? As I pointed out, why are there laws put in place to prevent conspiracy if conspiracies don't exist if they never happen i mean you know like hitler like even when hitler was like hey guys come in and have a shower jews you know we, we're so kind we just want to help you i believe if we do a really good job of getting you cleaned we can clean up our society and then the jews you know it's appearances can be deceiving conspiracies happen we all know how that played out and i'm sure the people back then um probably you know we're feeling as fucking naive as confused as uncertain as we are now and some people are like some people back then were like don't worry sh stop saying that they're trying to do something to us they're just they're changing their minds on us they're coming around the government's good they're trying to give us showers dude shut up and then they all got fucking slaughtered and then they all just got gassed out same thing now we've got people saying shut up shut up shut up conspiracies never happen straight out denialists then you got theorists, which is fine. A theorist is, is somebody who's not claiming to know the facts. They're not claiming to know the facts. That's why they call it a theorist. Theory. Theory has a lot more plausibility than facts. Because facts, if, in case no one's paying attention, facts change over time. Facts are improved. Whether we're talking scientific facts, whether we're talking about something that was regulated and, and uh, deemed safe, and then years later, once statistics actually, once enough time passed for statistics to grow, People change the facts, change the diagnosis, change the scientific law. So when you have a fact, the reason why it's less has less merit than theory 
is because at least a theory is open. A theory is open, it's inquisitive, it's reasonable, it's adaptive, it's it's expanding, it's refining, it's it's evolving. A fact is like, yeah, no, stamp on a piece of paper, this is filed away and locked away, fact, and it's closed. And sometimes, you know, some facts you, you can be pretty certain about and you can do that. And it serves well for everyone to have this common understanding and the shared agreeance that that is the way that is. But when we are so quick to dismiss something as possibly being worth theorizing any more about, and when we so readily just accept something as fact, because certain people, the people that are releasing, for example, these vaccines right now, who stand to profit the most, who Bill, relation with uh, David Rockefeller, who modeled the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation on Rockefeller's vision. And Rockefeller, just like Bill's father, was a huge eugenicist. Eugenics, eugenics is a long, uh, an old movement of targeting specific genes, specific people, and reducing them, reducing the population, and removing undesirables. It's a long standing agenda. I'm talking centuries, not even just uh, since Rockefeller. It's, it's, it's an old, archaic fucking text, eugenics. And uh, there's no secret that Rockefeller is a eugenicist, and neither is it a secret that Bill's father is. And that Bill, literally, going to his Wikipedia page, it says Bill modeled the foundation on Rockefeller's vision. So this is the thing. You have this propaganda being released uh, everywhere. All this propaganda that's very much like, yeah, come have a shower because we care. Yeah, have these vaccines. Um, and I think if we're too ready to just dismiss being more open about this and researching and listening to people who are actually theorizing. And if we're just quick to accept the facts printed off by these people who are doing all of this, it makes, it makes as much sense as somebody who's like, dude, that, that news publishing company, they're liars, man. It's a conspiracy. They're just tricking the people. And then someone's like, well, no, dude, that's wrong. Shut your mouth. You tinfoil hat. I've got this report here printed by that news company saying right here, we have never lied to you in our life. We only report the truth, fair and balanced. So what do you think of them facts? And it's, 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 it's retarded, no offense, for lack of a better word, it's retarded of intellect. Retardant to me, like fire retardant, you know, like where you can't be burned. That has no intellect whatsoever, whatsoever. So uh, moving forward, moving forward. So um, this whole thing of like, buying into the propaganda what it really comes from is choosing uh you know do we want to be comfortable um and move towards convenience and conformity because all of that is exactly why people make these compromises to their security to their freedoms and liberties uh even to their intellect they'll literally switch off the ultimate compromise they'll switch off their mind put their head in the sand um, just so they don't have to acknowledge any possible horrible, nasty scenarios that's unpreferable, undesirable, scary. And they just don't want to think about it because it's depressing. It's fear-mongering, fear-mongering. So they only look at the, the, the narratives that are printed by these lying, the lying publisher saying, we only tell the truth. They read that saying, well, that's much more comforting. Yeah, I want to believe that. I want to believe that. That's enough. And then anytime anyone else actually presents anything else, they just shove that news report in their face and say, I don't have to listen. Don't disturb my peace. Don't disturb my comfort, my convenience. You're fear mongering. You're dangerous to society. Toxic, hazardous. Just like who's really pushing right now. They're going to end up penalizing people, by the way, for the information thing. It's as they discussed at the event 201 or Agenda 21, I should say. They're going to penalize people for just speaking their mind. Um, they're already now priming people to accept this by very heavily pushing this propaganda that you're dangerous and that they have the right to remove and censor you and your and whatever you've shared if it's giving full, uh, disinformation that's that's dangerous to people. So um, it's really obvious when you, you look from outside the box at everything, you connect the dots, it's really obvious what's going on to those inside the box who have only really... Uh, subscribed to the um, mass established authority of unquestionable fact. Um, that's what I call it, the C. Um, supreme, sorry, the supreme established authority. Because it's, it's a sea of information, a worldwide network of propaganda, the supreme established authority of unquestionable fact. So it should be actually C and um, 
Because that's what it's like. There's a sea of information people just take for granted. And uh, when people actually challenge that and have anything to say, the person either goes, um, well, um, that's just unquestionable fact. Look, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you what's on the board. Okay? Uh, and that's, you know, we've been, we've been taught to be like that from school. You know, school doesn't teach people how to learn. School teaches you how to copy off a board and if you, you know, and not challenge the, the facts, but just replicate them in your own way. So it seems like you're participating and using logic, but it's pseudo logic. All you're doing is refashioning the same fact, the same idea that someone else has come up with. You're not creating your own idea or you're, you know, you're just rewording it. So you're, you're only changing the symbolism and the aesthetic, the superficial aspect of the same principle that everyone uniformly has to reproduce and regurgitate. And then you get called the best and the brightest for doing that the best. You get an A plus if you report the facts accurately instead of giving your own spin, instead of arriving at a different destination. It's not about questions. Uh, it's not about answers. Schooling is about indoctrination. It's an indoctrination pen for the economy and for this world. So now we have people using the same logic that they learn in school. It's not about using your own logic because there is no logic, it's pseudo logic, this is what I'm saying. When you have to take the fact of the lying newspaper company and, and you take their report saying, we don't lie, and you use that as fact, clearly this doesn't display any logic. Clearly it doesn't display any logic at all. Uh, I don't even have, do I have to explain why that doesn't make sense. If someone's accusing them of lying and, and they, these people that are accused of lying print the facts saying, no, we're not. And then people use that as evidence because it's an official report. I hope I don't have to explain why that is ludicrous and absurd and completely insane. Um, but this is what schools teach us, to just copy the facts on the board. And then everyone is doing this. Everyone's coalition mentality. Everyone's minimizing their differences and not speaking out. Because we're all seeing with all these shills laughing at everyone that speaks out. We don't want to be like them. No, we don't want to be judged. We're just going to 